Hello friends and welcome back to another week where we're talking about how to make your own SVGs using Canva and Inkscape. So if you missed last week, go watch that video because in last week's video, we talked about the basics of Canva. We talked about Canva Pro memberships and we talked about kind of just like the basic lay of the land and editing features. But this week, we're gonna dive a little deeper and talk about making your own SVG designs and all the different editing features and tools and just other things you need to know to do that successfully in Canva. We're gonna end today's lesson with exporting our final test design. And then next week, we're gonna be uploading it into Inkscape and I'm gonna show you how I use Inkscape to clean up those designs so they're ready to go for Cricut Design Space without any issues. So without further ado, let's jump in. This should be a quick one. And then next week we are off to the races and we're wrapping this series up. Last week we talked about some beginner design features in Canva. And this week we're just gonna go a little bit further. We're gonna talk about some more advanced editing features. And we're gonna talk about how to export your designs from Canva to Inkscape, which we'll cover next week, which is kind of the last step in our process of turning this into a fully functional SVG. So I'm gonna click on create a design. And I know we've talked about this before. I usually go with the t-shirt size. And the reasoning for that, once again, is because when it when Canva pushes templates to you to give you suggestions on where to start for your design, it does that based on what you pick here. And when I pick t-shirt, I'm gonna get something closest to what I'm ultimately designing when I'm making an SVG. So I tend to pick t-shirt, but you could also click custom size. And another common thing I do is I do 12 by 12 especially if I'm gonna start from scratch and I'm not interested in using a template, this is a great place to start because this is the size of a standard Cricut mat. So we're actually gonna start there. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here and we're gonna rename our design and we're gonna call it Laura's SVG. You can call it your name just to keep track of what you're doing. And like I was saying, you're gonna see that it's gonna push some templates to you based on what it thinks you're creating. And because we have a square design here, it's giving us some like Instagram posts and save the dates and that kind of thing, which is fine. We're not really interested in that today because we're gonna be creating from scratch in this episode. So let's go to elements. And let's pretend like we're creating a spring SVG. So I'm just gonna type in the search bar spring. And I wanna bring up a couple things to you that are gonna help you narrow down your search results whenever you're looking for elements to make your SVG designs. The first is we've got some photos here which are not gonna be good candidates for an SVG because they're not crisp, clean, vectorized graphics. They've got a lot of shading, detail, and blended, parts of it and stuff like that because it's a photograph. So we don't want those in our search results. And we also don't want animated graphics in our search results because that would not be a good candidate for an SVG either. So to narrow down our results, we're gonna click graphics right here. And then we're also gonna go to this little filter bar and we're gonna scroll down a little bit and we're gonna select that we only want static animations. This little cutout button is only gonna give you images that have transparent backgrounds. So if you want to narrow down your search results even further, you can select to only do cutouts. I tend to not do that and I just look at what all they have here. So here's all of our search results. We've got lots of cool options. And I know I said this in the last episode, but I'm gonna say it again. Whenever you're making SVGs, you always wanna begin with the end in mind. And what that means is that you wanna think about whether your Cricut could cut out this thing easily. So in this case, if I chose something like, uh, that one would be fine. Let's see, let me pick one that would not be good. <laughs> if I chose something like this, could my Cricut cut this out? Yes, technically, but this element alone has four colors, which means when I cut it out on my Cricut, it's gonna have four layers at least. And some of these layers are pretty detailed with all the lines um, connecting and some of them overlapping. And that's not gonna be very fun to weed and it's not gonna be very fun to apply. So that's not something I would select. Same thing with this one. Could my Cricut cut this out? Technically, maybe. Would I want to? No, never. So I tend to stray away from elements like those that have a lot of um, detail, a lot of colors, because they're gonna be pretty challenging to cut and weed on your Cricut. So that's what I mean when I say begin with the end in mind. So in this case, let's think about what we might want to do. Um, 
If we're doing a spring th spring themed shirt, it's always good to go floral, but I actually am loving this right here. I think it's very cute. And it's actually a pretty good candidate for an SVG because it's got crisp, clean lines. It's got four colors, but they're not like super complex. And we could even um, use the magic recommendations that are showing up here and select this one to kind of pair with it and maybe put it down here. Yeah, that's pretty cute. And then we could finally pair it with this third one and make like a fun little design of some kind. We'll put something in the middle here, but that's a good place to start. Um, that's gonna go ahead and help me point out just a couple other things to you that I think are important. First is, we've got a lot of colors going on here. We might wanna narrow this down. I love this color palette. So if I click on this and I wanna click to change this green to maybe the pink, you can see that Canva is going to go ahead and suggest to you the document colors that are already existing in your design. So if I select this pink, that's going to be the same pink that exists over here. And if I want to change this red maybe to that darker blue, that's going to be the same dark blue that exists over here. So it's going to go ahead and help you do a little color matching that's going to help you narrow down the colors in your design, which I personally love. So let's just narrow down a few more of these. There we go. Okay, so now we're back to our four color design. We love it, it's very cute. And we gotta decide what this design is actually gonna be. <laughs> but another thing I wanna bring up to you is magic recommendations, which we didn't talk about in the last one. But if you see a design that you really love, like this one, you can always click on this little ellipse menu and scroll down and click see more like this. And it's gonna give you similarly stylized elements or elements created by the same artist or elements that are in the same uh, theme. In this case, it looks like um, we just have these colorful, like festival style elements. So that is one way to help you kind of narrow down the vibe or the theme of your design if you want to go that route. I'm gonna click the X though, and we're gonna go back to our general spring results. And I think actually we're just gonna make this design say spring because I personally love the idea of something like this in the middle, but we're not gonna do it as an element. We're gonna do it with our own text because um, I wanna show you guys how to use the text feature. So could you use this? Sure, but we're gonna type it ourselves because I wanna show you a few other things. So let's go ahead and click on the text tab and we're gonna click to add a heading. Could we use from our templates down here and alter it? Sure, but we're gonna work from scratch today. So I'm gonna click to add a heading and I'm gonna use my corner to expand it. And then I'm just gonna type hello and then I'm going to click on my hello element and I'm going to right click it to copy it and then I'm gonna right click it again to paste it. You can see there are shortcuts for your keyboard that you could use for this as well. I'm just showing you by clicking it and then I'm gonna alter it to say spring. So now let's go find a font that we like. So to do that, we're gonna click on our font selector here, drop down menu. And note that we can narrow down our results by searching. So I'm going to select handwriting because I know I want this to be cursive of some kind. And we're gonna go ahead and pick this one. And then I don't want this to match. I would rather it be like something that's in all capitals maybe. Let's see what this looks like. Eh. Yeah, that's cute. Okay, so we've got something we like. I'm gonna go ahead and make this bigger. We're gonna do some effects on this because I wanna show you guys as many features as possible during this tutorial. We talked a little bit about cropping and flipping last time. So let's go ahead and flip this horizontally just for the heck of it so I can show you how to do that. And then note that you could also rotate. We're gonna make this a little smaller. We're gonna make this one a little bigger. We're gonna rotate it a little more. And then we're gonna bring this one right here. And we're gonna flip it vertically just to do it. No, we're not, we're gonna flip it back. <laughs> okay, another thing that I wanna talk about is a little bit more advanced text editing and adding effects to our text because that's something that I use a lot. So we can click on the effects here and notice there's a few that really won't be great for SVGs like neon, that just really makes it hard for your Cricut to cut it out or echo is gonna be a little bit challenging, but you can do something like um, hollow and you could always hollow out the center of your letters and that is one way to create like a different sort of effect with your uh, font and that would be fine for your Cricut to cut out. 
When you get it in a Cricut design space, I might weld or something so that you can get rid of these superfluous cuts in the middle, but you don't have to worry about that while in Canva. The other thing that you can do that I do a lot of the time is curve your text, which we're actually gonna do. We're gonna curve it a little less than that, but that's just a nice effect that's really trending right now that you can use on your SVGs. Another thing I do a lot of the time is I separate out the letters, which you can do from clicking on this spacing button and you can spread out your letters a little bit just to give it a nice look. And then we're gonna line that up here. And you can see we're already well on our way to like a pretty cool looking SVG. And that's really honestly the power of Canva is with not a lot of effort, you can make something pretty cool and unique. So we're gonna just rotate these a little more. We're gonna change the color on this to match what we've been doing. You can also change individual letters, just so you know. So let's go ahead and do that just to make this that much cooler. And this is looking like a very springy design. And then I can select the whole thing and kind of move it over if I want to. So this is a little bit of a lopsided design, but I think it's cute. I'm really liking it. Other things that I wanna make sure that we talk about. More quick things I wanna make sure that we mention before we move on to exporting our designs. It doesn't apply to this particular design, but it's something that is important for you to note because it might come up when you're designing things in the future. So the first is if I wanted something to be overlapping, like if for some reason I wanted this to be behind or in front of spring. As soon as you do that, you can open this positioning menu and move things forward and back in space on your design. And that can be really handy for getting things positioned how you want. So that's the first thing I wanna be sure to mention. Let me move this back where we wanted it. And then the second thing is the elements tab. So these elements worked great. They're multi-layered already because they have these different colors. So this element is already kind of separated out how we want it to be. But occasionally, you're gonna be finding an element. Let's go back to our search here. Oh, perfect, like this one. This one wouldn't be great to cut with Cricut anyway because it has all that shading, which would be very annoying, but this is perfect for our example. So you can see when I have selected this element that I don't have my color options up here. I just have edit image. And that's because this is just a flat image. It doesn't have dimension, it doesn't have layers. This is just, there's no extra data within this image to have it be separated into layers. So even if you export this as an SVG, like we're about to do, it's gonna be very challenging for you to break this into multiple layers for your Cricut to cut apart. You could do it using contour or by tracing it in Inkscape or by using bitmap tracing, which we're gonna talk about a little bit later but it's incredibly challenging and ultimately it usually doesn't give you the result exactly that you're looking for. And to be honest with you, Canva has plenty of elements in their library that are multi-layered and already split apart and you won't ever have to deal with something like this. So unless you find something that you're just absolutely in love with and you can't find anything else like it in Canva, which has actually never happened to me, <laughs> but if that happens to you, um, I would stay away from elements like this because they're gonna be really hard for you to work with and so I just tend to avoid them. So you always wanna look for elements like this one that where you can see up here, all of our colors are separated, which means each of these colors is a separate layer or um, like element of our element. It's broken down appropriately to be exported as an SVG. Another example is this ladybug already broken apart, we can tell right here. And I can narrow down the amount of colors in this design by just doing a little bit of color matching. And then this would make that a simpler element. But something like, let's see if I can find one, like this. I could tell right away this one wasn't what we wanted. So it just says edit image. We don't have all of our colors. That means this is a flat file. There's no dimension. Things are not split apart. There's no extra data within it. That would not be something I would want to use. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention as you're designing, you might run into that problem and I don't want you to get to the end of your design and have something like this within it that you're just dying to use and then to find out that you can't. So try not to do that. Try not to use those kinds of um, elements and you should be good to go. The other thing I really wanted to quickly mention is transparency. It can be very tempting to use it because it does make your design look very cool. 
but just keep in mind that your Cricut can't cut things with transparency. You're cutting on vinyl or you're cutting on some sort of material. So using the transparency um, dial is really not gonna do anything to the end product of your design. So I would just stay away from it and don't use it. But now we've made our SVG, we've talked about spacing, we've talked about color changing, we've talked about effects on our text, we've talked about cropping, flipping, rotating, positioning, using elements, using fonts, and that is really what you need to know from Canva in order to make awesome SVGs. So what I would encourage you to do is play with all those features, go make some amazing designs, and really just the more you play around with it, the better you're gonna get. But to wrap up this video, I wanna talk about how we wanna export this file because what we're gonna do in the next week is we're gonna put this into Inkscape. And that's where we're gonna kind of clean it up and make it exactly what we want for putting into Cricut Design Space. So actually, I'm gonna think ahead of the game a little bit and I'm gonna add a flower to this really fast because that's going to be useful when I show you what we're gonna be doing in Inkscape. So let me grab one really fast that I know will kind of have this issue that I'm thinking ahead on here. Okay, we're gonna use this one. So this is making our design very complicated. So let's just go ahead and like get rid of one of these. <laughs> just We're gonna simplify just a little bit. And I'm also gonna change the colors on this so that we can keep it simple because we definitely do not want uh, too many colors to work with because that can be very frustrating and very annoying. So let's narrow it down. That looks great. And then we're gonna make this bigger. Awesome, okay, is this the perfect SVG? No, it's kind of crazy and kind of busy, but it's gonna serve our purposes just fine. So we've got what we need. Now we're gonna click the share button and then you're gonna click download. And what we wanna do is download this as an SVG with a transparent background. So you do need Canva Pro for this, which we talked about last week. You can try it for free for 30 days using the link that's attached to this video. See if you like it but you definitely do need to download as an SVG in order to export SVGs from Canva. So select this file type, select transparent background and click download. And with that, you are done. So play with Canva this week, play with all these features. Next week, we'll talk about cleaning it all up in Inkscape and getting this little guy ready to go. Well friends, that is it. It's that simple. Canva is really the easiest place for you to create your own SVG designs. And it's really part of the reason why a Canva Pro membership has been worth it for me for the last five years, because I truly use it every day to make designs for my Cricut. And it's just like the easiest low input way for you to create those custom designs that are exactly what you're looking for without having to have a graphic design degree. <laughs> if you want to know more about that, I'm considering doing a series on Procreate and that's where you could actually draw with like an Apple Pencil your own SVGs as well. Um, and you would still use Inkscape for that process. So if you're interested in that, let me know in the comments. But otherwise, we'll be wrapping up this series next week where we talk about Inkscape and that's where we kind of clean these designs up, get rid of any superfluous cuts, make sure it looks really good to go for Cricut Design Space and then upload it and cut it with our Cricut. So I can't wait to see you there, but until then, Happy crafting. <laughs>